Tonight, can Griffin Armament solve our 300 blackout saga? I go to therapy, and we rejoice in the sound of suppressed subsonic ammo. It's all happening now on the 1911 City. My name's Jake Dwyer, and I'm in an abusive relationship with 300 Blackout. Now, I know that might not sound that bad, especially compared to the meth problem that many of you are dealing with. Over the years, I've had unusable handguards, proprietary buffer systems, incorrect gas ports, One company even blamed the malfunctions on the altitude. I've had to turn tricks in a Walgreens parking lot just to afford the ammo. And the worst part is, I'm thinking about getting another one. So stupid. But I'm a dreamer. My people, my people came to this country with nothing. Just a couple of potatoes, a bottle of Jameson, and a can-do attitude. I believe there's a good 300 blackout out there, and I will not be denied. I will spend every last penny I have in the pursuit of the ultimate 300 blackout. Now who's with me? Okay, everyone, welcome to the show. And today we are going back down the expensive path to hell known as 300 Blackout. I've been on a journey with 300 Blackout and just to maybe answer this in advance, I'm aware that there's plenty of good 300 Blackout guns out there, but I have to go on my personal experience. And over the last handful of years, it's been a dicey road that we've had with 300 Blackout, ranging from uh, honey badgers, battle arms, a little bit of struggles with the GQ gun. So um, going back down this path, I cannot believe I'm here doing this yet again. So <clears throat> today we are gonna be looking at the Griffin Mark II. This is their um, sort of second gen of rifles that they just came out with. So we'll be looking at the gun. We will also be looking at the uh, HRT-7 suppressor that is on this. Just to give you a sense for it, we'll also be doing some sort of head-to-head uh, -head sound uh, testing would be a loose term here, everyone. Uh, shooting several 300 blackout guns beside each other to try to figure out which one sounds the best. If that qualifies as testing, then that's what we shall do. Um, we will also look at, um, We'll do it at the end of the video just because it's not the focal point. We'll look at some of the accessories on the gun. The reason that we're doing that is because this video basically came about, and I guess we'll just kind of start with this. We did a video, well, not a video, but on my Spear LT, the Sig Spear LT video, I had a Griffin um, suppressor on it, and I really wound up liking it. And after that 
video I had some communication with Griffin and just said hey you know I'd be down if you guys ever want to do like another video on something and they said well how about this you know we've got new rifle coming out and uh we actually make a ton of different accessories why don't we just completely kit out a gun like start to finish with all of our stuff and we'll send you like a completed gun and you can do the review on that suppressor and everything I thought oh, okay that's it's kind of a cool idea so um relationship with these guys hey they sent me the gun and the suppressor for the video um I think it's fairly well documented we've got a decent track record at this point you guys know regardless of if a gun was sent to us for um the video that uh we'll give you guys an honest shake in the video that said big thanks to Sagara gear for sponsoring the video today um chris and his big waist is not here um we've got my athletic waist here and around it is a Sagara light inner velcro belt that is the one that i actually edc um it's actually quite good at the range too as long as you don't have a heavy load of uh as long as you don't have a heavy heavy load of um you know uh, holsters and magazines guns all that kind of stuff on you you can actually get it with the light inner velcro at the uh range so that's what i edc you can also throw the battle wagon on top of that they make great stuff we did a couple videos on their their uh, products and belts before they ever sponsor the channel i'll have those linked below in the event you guys ever need a belt you can go check those out plugging code 1911 syndicate saves you 10 percent off the belts anyway Appreciate those guys. Okay, everyone, so let's kick off um, talking about some fundamentals of the gun. And I'm gonna start with this. Many, many manufacturers, when you talk to them or read their website or whatever, they say, oh, this is our barrel. Uh, this is our trigger, our handguard, our lower, whatever it is. Oftentimes what they mean when they say that, it's not that they're trying to lie to you, it's just we're playing in shades of gray. Oftentimes what they mean is, hey, it is our design. We designed this. We have a third party manufacturer who actually makes the thing for us and then they send it to us and it's our logo. It's our it's our design. Like, you know, it is our IP. It's our intellectual property, but we are not a machine shop. So someone else makes that for us. Um, and that's very, very common. That's how the industry works. Why am I talking about this? Because Griffin is amongst the companies. And it's not to say that there's like no companies that do this. I'm just saying the list is probably smaller um, than you guys may imagine. Um, Griffin is in the list of companies that, hey, they are a uh, working machine shop and they make a lot of things in their facility in Wisconsin, right? So, hey, go cheese. Um, so they make a lot of the things that you see on the gun here. Almost everything else is their design that would just be, you know, outsourced to a third party manufacturer because, hey, you can't make everything. Otherwise, it's just, you know, it's just it's it's a really big ask. So a lot of the big components we might cover a couple as we go. Um, uh, they do make themselves some of the things that they don't. But again, their design, yada, yada, yada. Right. So just understand that going in. It's meant as a compliment just to say, hey, they are a shop that actually makes a lot of their own stuff. They just released the Mark II and mine, Chamberlain 300 Blackout, as you already know at this point, they also have it in 5.56, of course. MSRP on these is $18.95. And I'll go ahead and tell you in advance, it's a very good price on this gun. It's a very, very good price on this gun. I truly think the days of good, like, sub two thousand dollar guns like those days are getting fewer and fewer it's like yeah you can go get some decent stuff but especially for a full ambi gun like this at 1895 and who knows you may not even be able to find it less than that hey um pretty damn good value there okay forged upper and lower as mentioned full ambidextrous controls that would include ambidextrous safety that would include ambidextrous charging handle <clears throat> and then all of your main controls. So we've got for lefties like me, you've got your mag release. We've got your ambi-side bolt release. I think for a lot of you righties, <clears throat> you will probably like knowing. I never work guns like you guys, but uh, you can push up on the, um, the ambi-side bolt release and lock your bolt back which seems to be a gripe that some people have about certain ambi lowers that it's not true ambi because you can only lock the bolt back from the traditional side there i don't really see it being that big of a deal <coughs> but i might be in the minority on that 416 r stainless barrel nine and a half inch barrel on this black nitrated 
magnetic particle inspected MPI one in seven twist. Um, that's good. These are some things that you would like to see in your gun mid length gas system. That I think will be a point of slight um, uh, d debate <clears throat> on a round like 300 blackout, which spans the range of supersonic and subsonic ammo. You know, it's a very picky round. It's a very, very tricky round to do right and uh, have a gun that's well gas for that. So a lot of times you will see adjustable gas box. That way you can, you know, turn up the gas, turn down the gas, just based on the specific ammo that you're using. To do a non-adjustable gas block is a bit of Griffin throwing their nuts on the table and just saying like, hey, we know how to build a gun that's gonna work and uh, we're not gonna give you the option. We're gonna just make the gun the way the gun is supposed to be made. There's different arguments on both sides of that equation of like adjustability or non-adjustability. So it just depends. I don't really have an answer. I'm just here to tell you, hey, non-adjustable gas block and it's a bold move. Suppressor optimized buffer system. I, I, I've talked to Griffin on the phone heading into the vi video. I still can't, the best way I could describe the buffer system is almost like a hydraulic buffer system. <clears throat> I don't think that that is <clears throat> the uh, technical way that you would put it, but it's about the best way that I can come here and describe it to you. Comes with a basic mil spec trigger, nothing to write home about. It would probably be something that many of you would change. It does come with a QD in plate, um, so you can attach your sling and all that good stuff. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the suppressor and sort of the gun and the suppressor combo. 300 blackout in my mind is a completely useless thing and the gun all of it if i'm not shooting suppressed subsonic 300 blackout rounds i have no interest in the platform if that's not what we're doing with it supersonics like okay like i, I just it's just not what i'm into okay so the <clears throat> can on the gun is the HRT 762 can. You might just see it called the HRT 7, but its combination is 174 stainless and 718 Inconel, 7.65 inches, weighing in at 18 ounces. So it's a bit of a longer and chunkier can. I, it doesn't wind up feeling front heavy. There's no um, feeling that I'm getting of like, man, that that is just like a beefy can, which sometimes is just the case. Sometimes there's certain cans that like I don't know, they just just feel chunky. This doesn't feel chunky, even though if you just look at the weight and the length of it, you're like, yeah, it's closer to an L can, a long can versus most of your standard rifle cans are closer to six inches. You know, your K cans closer to five inches there. So this is a bit of a longer can. It has their, <clears throat> bear with me on the cough, everyone. For some reason, I'm melting down over here. It has their EcoFlow baffle system which is the same style of baffles that my 5.56 can had on my Sig Spear LT. And I was really fond of that can. And, and that was a pleasant surprise for me because Griffin, I'd never owned anything from. And look, I can't really describe to you how the eco baffle thing works other than to tell you the intent of it is to be a low back pressure suppressor. And it does a very good job of that. I have shot this um, about 50-50 in terms of indoor and outdoor. Indoor, for me as a lefty, right? If you just think about how the mechanics of this work as a lefty, right? I'm, I'm right by the ejection port. And you have a tendency, especially indoors, to get gassed out on either a suppressor that is higher back pressure or a gun that's simply um, over gas, especially than if you throw a can on it. And I have not been gassed out by this at all, whether indoors or outdoors. Like I haven't had any issues with just getting a bunch of gas blowback in your face. So <clears throat> the eco baffle thing works. Um, it, 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 it's very, very low back pressure. I think it might even be lower back pressure than what Griffin says it is. Like in my experience as a lefty, as someone who's sensitive to this stuff, very low back pressure can. Okay, so the the mounting system, mounting system is very important to a suppressor in my opinion, because there are some that simply carbon lock under the gun right away, even if manufacturers say that it doesn't happen. Yes, it does. Um, and so a mounting system is very, very important. Griffin uses this dual lock system where basically, hey, I'm not gonna show you because YouTube can be very unpredictable in what they deem to be problematic content. But basically like, look, the, the suppressor just um, threads onto the, you know, you just screw it on, just thread it onto the muzzle device, and then you just drop a little locking collar onto it, and then it's mechanically locked in place so it really can't back off. 
getting a suppressor on is never really the challenge. Getting a suppressor off is when things get problematic a lot of times. I have not had, whether on this or my Sig Spear with the other Griffin can, I've never had the dual lock system carbon lock. The little locking collar comes up, no issues, can threads off. Even when it's, you know, hot, cool, super, you know, higher round count, whatever it is, I've had no issues. So again, have to compliment the can on that. There's no barrel length restrictions, it's full auto rated. And let's take you to a little bit of sound testing. All right, Jake. Let's test some guns. Okay, everyone. So what we're going to do, um, uh, Chris is uh, unfortunately not here today. This is Chris's stunt double. His Chris. name is Crispy. He is sometimes behind the camera. Oh, basically all the time behind the camera. All the time behind the camera. <clears throat> um, so what we're going to do, three different 300 blackout guns. Um, we have the Battle Arms Silent Professional, which we have covered and um, jabbed at plenty of times. I thought that was the Loud Professional. Uh, it, well, we'll see how it goes today. It once was. We've got the GQ Armory Paladin that we had on the channel, I don't know, a couple months ago or something, whenever you guys see this. And then we've got the uh, Griffin build. So what we're going to do, I have a theory that the uh, Griffin gun with their HRT7 can is the most quiet. I have not done head-to-head -head testing yeah this is based on zero science whatsoever uh we do not have a sound meter we don't do that here um that's expensive technical gear but i do have... know a thing or two about audio and we got good ears good ears so we're just going to use um smb uh 100 or 205 grain subs and just gonna kind of go head to head here see what we got might be a little bit of first round pop on these first couple because they haven't been shot in a long time um so yeah i don't know so this is the Battle Arms with uh, Dead Air Sandman S. Let's see how this bad boy's sounding. Okay, not bad. Not bad. Uh, let's that out. It's like a deep thud. Yeah, a that thump. actually, to be honest, sounds better than I remember that sounding. So the Paladin, this is with their can on it. Okay, that's bite ear. That's bite ear. Okay. Yep. Got more of a got more of a snap for sure. Shoot snappier too, just because it's lighter. Have you been off the gun for this one yet? Or have you been behind the gun for each year's sound test? Do you have friends on the range when you test or Depends on the day. I got you. I do have friends, if that's what you're suggesting. Yeah. I don't have friends. That's what I was asking. I got have friends. you heard it off the gun, downrange? Any um, other? a little bit. Okay. I don't know. That is such a different tone than than the GQ. Holy shit, that's a different. That's a totally different sound. I'm calling that the most quiet. Yeah, I think so. Go go behind the gun. Okay. See what you see on that. Yeah. I'm going to. Everyone relax. I'm just gonna be slightly off center of you just because okay. I want to hear it slightly. About seven over. yards off of me? Yeah. Okay. Very yeah, cool. Oh man, that sounds good. Yeah. It sounds really good from over there. Right. Yeah. I don't mind it from behind the gun. No, either. that it's is a, a soft recoil and pulse too. Super soft. Um, I have not, minus being indoors, obviously, I've not worn ears while I've shot this gun, um, including today we're at 100 and about 180 rounds now. I haven't worn ears once today. Yeah. I'm totally fine, not rung whatsoever. Well, and sometimes when we're filming at this location, when we are up close to the concrete, there is a little bit louder of a reflection. Yep. And that'll get me sometimes, but I haven't felt that at all today. We were no. filming in the tunnel, like it almost sounded better in the tunnel. Yeah, we shot in the tunnel with no ears. And again, not rung, totally fine. So I'm gonna go, okay, I'm gonna cast my vote. You tell me what you think. I'm going, uh, the, the Griffin gun with their can, I, I, I think is the most quiet gun out here. Yeah, I couldn't argue that. I was trying to, cause this is a thump it and is. that's like a loud crack. I was trying to be creative. It's crackier, like, yep. Chris would have come up with a word for this. Like a, like that's a, I don't, what's the word? What word would Chris create for that right now? It's like, I'm trying to pinpoint it too. Okay. It is, let's see. <laughs> God, the second round drops off a lot. It's just mechanical. There, mm. there, there's no, it, it's like there's no real pop. 
pop or anything. So to almost everything that, that I'm hearing is just the action. Mm -hmm. Like I'm just hearing the cycling of the gun. It's it's not. It's like 80% thump and like 20% crack. Yeah. But in like a really good balance too. I like that. It's good. It's a really, really good tone on that. So I don't know if this will translate on camera in terms of mics and everything. They never really do a great job of picking up what we hear in person. But if you guys have an opinion, you can comment below with whichever one you think sounds the best. Okay, everyone, if you're looking for any ways to support the channel, we would love that. The 1911 Syndicate is a real estate company. Uh, we help people buy and sell and move all around the US. Uh, please hit us up if you ever need help with that. Super shitty real estate climate right now. So now more than ever, it really helps us out um, if you hit us up when you need real estate help. Um, so check that out and uh, just stay tuned. Maybe sign up for the newsletter. I don't know exactly when this video will drop. So let's get into some thoughts on the gun. <clears throat> Again, price point is 1895. At that price point, I really do not expect a full ambidextrous gun. I just don't. I don't think that you guys do either. I think that that is one of sort of the delights of this gun is just going, man, sub $2,000 gun that also comes with some good accessories I'll walk you guys through and full ambi, that's solid, man. Like that's really, really good value, okay? They did a good job on the controls from the perspective of someone who's ambidextrous, I think they really did a good job on the controls. I'll give you an example. The most, the most helpful thing to us lefties is the ambi side bolt release, okay? Where new mag goes in and <clears throat> oftentimes it's a button that you push. This is a lever, right? So you just go down. Good design on that. So typically the ambi side bolt release is pretty straightforward. <clears throat> it's also pretty straightforward because I can see it. When I go to do my reload, new mag goes in, I can see it. So I know whether to push, swipe down on the lever, whatever it is. The trickier part is the ambi side mag release because everyone puts it in a slightly different position. And what Griffin did that's good, I'm not gonna look so I don't game the system. There's a little ledge that they have built onto the lower. And the ledge serves as basically a stop point. There it is right there, right? There's a ledge right there where you're like, hey, that's the stop point for the lower receiver. Right above that ledge will be the button. Well, that's good. There's nothing that complicated about it. It's actually very, very simple. But again, when I'm shooting and my face is on this side of the gun, I can't see where the mag release is here and everyone puts them in slightly different positions. So having this ledge right here is helpful because I know that's where the button is. Nice design on the ambi controls. Let's talk overall shooting experience and uh, recoil. An almost unusually soft recoiling gun. Like, I mean, when I say I, I think they really nailed the gassing and everything of this gun and their buffer system, they got it right. It is a very soft shooting gun, especially, I mean, we're talking a 30 cal round, right? You're talking a pretty heavy, weighty round. Granted, it's not moving that fast, but it is a very soft shooting gun. And I'd be willing to bet for most of you, if I were to give you this and just say, hey, give me your two cents when you shoot a couple rounds, you'd say, one, it's quiet as hell, and two, it just shoots nice. Like, it's a pleasant gun to shoot. Um, some of the other 300 blackout guns, the problem that I think they're, they're running, they're, they're chasing a solution for a problem that doesn't exist, which is they're trying to be the lightest thing in the world. And problem with that is you wind up with an inherently snappier gun because you, you shave all this weight. Well, what does weight do? Weight so soaks up recoil. That's why people use a steel grip module on a 2011 instead of aluminum or aluminum instead of polymer. So when you take away that weight on these PDW style 300 blackouts, you just get a snappier gun. Snappier guns mean you're simply not gonna be able to shoot it as fast. So what's important to you? I don't know, I, I think that's personal preference. Do you go, do you want a heavier gun like this, which is not heavy, but a heavier gun like this, that's gonna shoot way softer and therefore faster, or do you wanna shave as much weight as possible and have a gun that you're gonna shoot slower because it's gonna have a snappier recoil impulse, but it's lighter in a bag? I don't know. You know, that, that's a pick your poison scenario. I don't think that there's a right answer. I think there's probably a right answer for you and your application. So we'll talk reliability a little bit. I've had, I'm going to say this and then back up and just kind of clarify something. I've had no malfunctions on the gun. And for me, as someone who's had a lot of malfunctions on 300 blackout guns, 
that is a freaking joy. Now, here's my only caveat to that. Gun took a handful of mags to break into the point of getting bolt lock back consistently, okay? And the only round, just to be very specific on this, everything is always locked back except S and B subs, which are pretty, pretty low power. Like even when you, if you were to hear the two different ammos we were shooting today, which is some SIG marksman rounds, I think they're 220 grain, then the S and B stuff, which is 205. The S and B stuff is way more quiet and way softer recoil impulse. So I think it's just pretty weak ammo and that weak ammo, especially when the gun was new, occasionally you wouldn't get bolt lock back. So sure, that's a malfunction, but it's not like a reliability malfunction. It's almost hard to describe what I mean. I think you guys kind of get where I'm going with that. But once I was about four or five mags in, consistent lock back, I have one uh, mag today that on one, one mag cycle of SMB didn't lock back. And that was just a <clears throat> kind of one and done on that. Aesthetically, I will tell you, <clears throat> there's nothing mind blowing about this gun. It's not the sexiest looking gun in the world. Not an ugly gun, just not the sexiest looking gun in the world. I'm still kind of of the opinion that everyone should just offer their guns also in FDE because it makes them look about 10 times cooler right out of the gates there. But <clears throat> hey, if you want the coolest looking shit, hey, there's all the PDW things and everything. I've had mixed reliability results with those. This is something where you go like, look, man, it's not the, the, the hottest girl in, in school, but you know, reliable and, and good shooting, you know? I don't know, That maybe that kind of sort of makes sense. Maybe it doesn't, I don't know. <clears throat> the gun and the suppressor are really what matter. Everything else is a luxury and a bonus if it's good. And we'll talk a little bit about the accessories here in a minute, but really <clears throat> at the end of the day, the gun and the suppressor is what matters here. Okay, as mentioned at the start of the video, Griffin makes the vast majority of their own accessories. So about the only thing on this that is not theirs is the light. The light is a HRT light. We've, uh, I think we, well, we kind of sort of did a video on this. You guys can always go find. HRT's got a, a like a lower output, basically a higher lumen, lower candela, more of a flood style light coming out. This is one of their early models of that. I've had good experiences with them. Video is not about the light. I'm just clarifying the light's basically the only thing on the gun that is not from Griffin. <coughs> the optic, <coughs> I mean, literally everything has a Griffin logo on it, including the little sort of acro clone here. So, hey, look, it's just meant to be, it, it's basically like an aim point acro, everyone, except um, way lower priced. And to be honest with you, it's been pretty damn good. So it's uh, acro footprint, 193 on the optic mount. Again, optic mount from Griffin. These things are like 200 bucks. It comes with a different mount. This is a, a different mount that they threw on it. The, the optic itself would come with a, a mount different than the one you see on the gun. But again, at like 200 bucks, sometimes, you know, I, I, <clears throat> you've got like two rifles, hey, kit them out to the, you know, to the, to the max. But it's like, if you start running through a lot of gear, sometimes you go, look, man, not everything can get an $800 red dot on it. And you go, man, look, that's a $200 dot that I can't quite explain it, guys, but I swear to God, man, the dot, I have pretty bad astigmatism. And when I look at this, it's just better. Like I, I'm seeing pretty close to a dot. Like I'm not seeing a star like I normally do. Can't explain that, can't really make any sense of it. I'm just saying for some reason, I don't think there's any special voodoo witchcraft going in here. And just like, I don't know, for some reason that dot is actually pretty damn clear to me. So hey, at 200 bucks, not bad at all. Uh, I'll, I'll definitely give them a pass on that. They do have iron sights. Griffin makes some irons that are really good. They had them on an offset on this, um, just the way the gun was originally set up. And <clears throat> I took the irons off because I had to based on where the light placement was gonna go. I will tell you, Griffin makes really good iron sights. That's another accessory they make that I would say, yeah, 100%, they make some good irons. The rail panels. So the gun actually comes with these. It comes with basically one, two, and then a, a, a third one over this size. You can move them wherever you want. They have done a very good job at mitigating heat. Again, in the list of things that this gun's doing very well, it doesn't really get that hot. Um, I think part of it is maybe the lower back pressure can, but 
the gun simply doesn't get that hot. But you know, you start running a handful of mags through a suppressed weapon, the handguard is gonna get pretty hot. The rail panels have done good. Um, so yeah, I really can't find much to complain about there. The only thing I wish they would do is make these in a shorter configuration because they just take up a lot of real estate on your rail. But in terms of the overall, just like texture, aesthetic and how they actually do, that, you know, they're, they're good. I can't really find much to pick apart on the rail panels. And again, they come with the gun, which is a nice value upgrade. Um, sling attaches, there's nothing notable, you know, basic sling attach, QD. I'll tell you the things that I would probably change. Stock, grip, and trigger. These are the things that are just not notable to me. There's, there's nothing bad about it. I would just say, yeah, those are the things that truthfully, now that we're wrapping up the review and this gun will, you know, kind of move into the rotation for me, I will probably stock or uh, change out the stock. I'll definitely change out the grip and um, the trigger. Trigger's just, you know, mil spec, nothing notable. I think this gun being, it wants to be a really fast gun. The trigger for me slows me down a little bit just cause, you know, just mil spec trigger. So I'll swap the trigger. I'll swap the grip. I'll swap the stock. None of them are bad. They're just basically the non-notable parts of an otherwise fairly notable gun. So those are the things that I would wind up swapping out. Charging handle, <clears throat> what do they call this? The SNACH, Suppressor Normalized Ambidextrous Charging Handle. So it's, it's designed very simply. There's a lot of designs like this, right? Designed to reduce uh, gas coming back in the shooter's face. And what's also kind of neat about the design has little screws back here, you can back those out. And if you wanna throw on shorter arms to, for more of like a low profile, lower snag hazard type charging handle, you can do that. So basically you can take one base charging handle and run it with the, either the, the wider paddles or you can run the slimmer line paddles if you so choose. Okay everyone, so final thoughts. I'm a little almost disappointed at myself. So when I got the first Griffin can that I've got on my spear, I don't know why I went in with not like a negative attitude, but I just thought, hey, we'll see how it is. It'll probably be decent, you know? And you're like, hey, that's sort of somewhere between like, I don't know, you're excited and uh, and not. I, I don't know what it is. But I wound up really liking that can. And for some reason, I went in this video with almost a similar impression of like, I don't really know Griffin made rifles. I, I don't know, well, let's see how it is. And while that's actually a good attitude to go into things with, cause you're going in kind of neutral, you're not like super high or super low on it. You're just going, I don't know, let's see how it does. That's actually a good thing. But my point is more that I, uh, I believe I've kind of slept on Griffin for quite a while. And I think that that's, you know, probably pretty common. I think there's a lot of folks that, um, I, I could see how this could sound like a dig. It's not, it's actually meant in a positive way, but it's like, I don't know, man. I think people might be sleeping on Griffin a little bit and going, hey, look, especially per the price, very good value. The gun shot incredibly well, sounds good. It seems well made. I, I mean, you just go, are, are we as a community sleeping on Griffin right now? Like, I, I think that might really be the case. I will tell you as someone who is for a long time wanted a good 300 blackout gun to have in a home defense capacity, I will probably have this in the rotation of like home defense guns because you go, look, short gun, quiet, punchy round. It's basically that sub gun on steroids that I've kind of looked for for a long time. And it's not overly polluted with a bunch of stuff. It's just a good clean build. So look, it's been a really positive experience for me. I feel like we're maybe at a point here where, you know, at least my personal sort of saga with finding a good 300 blackout can come to the end. Maybe now we can just continue to find more and more good 300 blackout guns. But at least for me checking the box of going, can we just get a good one of these damn things? Well, I think I might've got one. So hopefully um, if you use a gun for home defense uh, like this, hey, hopefully you never have to use the damn thing, right? But if you do, someone breaks in, things get wild, then uh, you're probably gonna wanna be able to call some attorneys, get some advice, have legal fees covered, things like that. Chris and I use a company called Firearms Legal Protection. They've sponsored the channel for a while now, as I'm sure many of you know. Um, there's a code that you guys can use, it's just 1911, saves you the 30, 35% off the different memberships there. We've got a couple plans, whether it's just you, you plus spouse, uh, you and you travel, you and you don't really travel that much, there's a few different options. But like I said, unlimited attorney fees, attorney hotline, that way if shit gets bad, 
You don't call a customer service rep. You actually talk to an attorney when you call. Um, there's a lot of good benefits to it. We think it's worth you guys checking out. Appreciate them. See you guys next time.